Hello and welcome back to Streamlit part 14 where we're going to take a look at caching in Streamlit. Caching is an extremely important aspect of Streamlit because it really improves the performance. This is because Streamlit enjoys running or rerunning pages when changes are made and caching can allow you to improve performance by storing resources or data so it doesn't have to reload them each time the page reloads. The first type of caching we're going to take a look at is data caching. This is good for a few are loading in a CSV or things like that. To illustrate this, we're going to make a clear button right here just so we can clear the cache. And then caches are declared with using decorators. So you cache a method to create a load data method and then do st cache data and the method. And then we're just simulating a loading of a file. And then we're just going to return a data frame to illustrate this we can make a button that will load the data and then the first load will be without the cache and then the second load will be with the cache create a button and then from there we want to load the data a thousand times to illustrate the benefits of caching we're gonna then create a button that calls the load data passes it a thousand, which will create the data frame and then times how long it takes. The first time we click this button, it will load the data. It will take two seconds. And then the second time we click the button, it will be instant because that data is now cached. So if we clear the cache and load the data again, it will take two seconds. But basically the second time we click it, it's almost like negating this method and just calling it from the cache. So it doesn't hit that two seconds sleep anymore. It's just calling the data frame return from cache. After data cache, we're going to look at caching resources. This is useful for caching database connections, machine learning models, things of that nature. To do this, it's a lot like caching data, but you specify cache resource within the declarator. Much like caching data, we're then going to simulate this by creating a button that loads the model and then caches it so that when we click the button the first time, it will take three seconds this time to load in that model. And then if we click load again, it will be zero. We already did this above, but we're also gonna do clearing caches. So you can either clear all the caches for a specific type of cache, or you can specify the cache you wanna clear. The first one, this button clears the method load data cache. So you can call specific methods that have a cache on it and then clear that specific one or you can clear a specific type of cache so you can clear either a data cache or a resource cache and just clear all of them out finally we have some more advanced methods for caching first we're going to take a look at a data cache this is for both of them though and it specifies a time to live so ttl which this is one hour so you can load that api data load that data for one hour and then after that it will be removed from the clash and cache and cleared this is good for database connections as well you can also do this for resource caches and to do this we can come up here and we'll just add it in and we'll do a resource cache ttl and then we'll do two seconds we can see this pretty quickly we can load the data model and then if we click immediately nothing and then if we wait two seconds i think that's about it it should yep take a bit of time to load again finally we have max entries so this will only cache up to the maximum number of entries so like a thousand this can be useful if you have time series data and you just want to cache the most recent data and then you might need to go fetch if you get more historic data or stock charts cache the cache today's data and then if someone wants to evaluate multiple dates or something it will then go back and fetch that that is it for streamlit caching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.